Yeah. So all of that and all of that has got to go in there. It's going to be fun. It's like Tetris. Oh, it won't be that bad. <laughs> she can be loaded. <laughs> Morning, bro. Is it, is it cold ready though? Rock and roll? Okay, guys, it is 5 a.m. and we are freaking ready for blast off. So we uh, spent yesterday loading this thing. We said we were going to take less this year, but. <laughs> The shirt feels like it's more full than it was last year. Well, that's because you brought two pillows, not one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here with my two brothers. Like, I don't know, you guys, I'll show you when we get there, but it is freaking full. So I just put that little lock on there, just in case if that cooler falls, it doesn't pop that back window open and we don't lose half our stuff. <laughs> uh, so anyways, yeah, we're just getting ready. Um, it's pretty chilly, so we got uh, only a couple hours to go till we get there, till we unload, and then maybe another hour and a half or so into the bush with the Sherp. So we're gonna get trucking, and don't worry, we'll get to that soon. You'll see what we got planned for that. It's gonna be freaking awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, we are unloaded and we are ready to cruise. So um, this awesome uh, farmer let us park in his old uh, yard site here. He doesn't live here anymore. Oh, little kitties. But uh, it's nice, it's off the highway, it's kind of out of view. So huge thanks to you, buddy, for letting us park here. Uh, the truck will be here for four or five days. So <laughs> we didn't want to just leave it kind of all willy nilly. So look at these guys having a little drink. These are probably good mosters. So anyways, yeah, we got her all ready to go here. Just gonna hop in, she's probably warmed up already. We had to put a bit of air in the tires. Um, it was in the shop, they were all all nice and full. And then get outside and it's minus two. Um, the air pressure dropped so much, so we just tightened up the straps rather than starting it and trying to put air in it. So get her pumped up and we'll get cruising down the road here, get onto the trail. All right, this gives you an idea of <laughs> how loaded we are here. What, there's nothing in here? <laughs> We even got a table up on top here. <laughs> she is packed, guys. Full generator, water, fuel. Crazy. All right, let's get cruising. Okay, so we just got onto the start of the Bannock Trail. It's kind of hard to tell. Obviously, it's dry, but it's uh, pretty, pretty uh, crisp out this morning too. So, but it doesn't look like we'd have any trouble. You don't have to take the go around go around through the trees, you can just come straight up the gut here. So she's pretty dry this year guys. Okay, we're at our first skim spot and uh, the water is way down. Usually the water is up past here. So when we hit this hole, there's always that log and you have to make sure you skim long enough so you can make it on the other side of that log. Either you gotta go slow and bounce over or you gotta just give her and skim over top of that log. Awesome. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a it's a rough rough ride. So usually you can't see that log. Usually it's about two feet underwater. So this just goes to show how much the water level's down. I was kind of wondering if there'd be any water here. So at least there's some water. Okay, this is the first beaver dam. Usually this is about three, three and a half, four feet deep on the other side. Let's go. Crazy pants! <laughs> Razzle dazzle!
to think the beavers uh, abandoned this. <laughs> She is dry as heck. Pretty cool when you can see <laughs> all the stuff you had to drive over when there was water. <laughs> Holy cow. Kicking up all these logs. Yep, she is dry. You guys see that giant owl? If you don't see it now, you'll see it in a sec here. A really big guy. Look at that big sucker. So cool. Okay guys, so we're cruising along here and we're just having a little discussion about how is this trail so wide? Like we've been riding this trail for a good five years only. The trail's been around for, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years, but why isn't there trees, saplings growing? Like there's nothing that comes down here to mow this or it doesn't get sprayed. So how does this stay so wide open and wide like this? Like it's like the widest trail ever. You could land a freaking Boeing 767 down here. So we're hoping someone in the comments knows what's up. How does this trail stay like this? It doesn't get groomed, there's no, it's, it's so muskeggy, no equipment is getting down here. So what do you guys figure? <laughs> okay so we're just uh trying to last year um what do you think another four or five clicks where we were last year another four or five clicks up we were kind of beside this lake but uh, we did most of our hunting back this way, so we thought maybe we'd make camp a little bit closer this year. And we're trying to get alongside this creek, but looks kind of more like a slough. Hey, quit pissing around. Kind of a dried up slough there. Man, look at that, it looks like cattle. <laughs> the amount of tracks in the mud. So we'll do a little bit more scouting and then we'll pick back up when we find a good place for camp. But it's not quite as much brush as I thought. Yeah. So last year uh, there was way more water, probably two or three feet more water in through here. Now it's pretty, uh, pretty dried out. So the water was up just past where Steven's standing there. So I'm not sure if we're gonna camp here or if we're gonna just poke up a bit more. It's really cool in through here though. It's like beaver dams every like 100 yards. And look at the, <laughs> it looks like a cattle pasture. This is all just deer, moose, whatever. Yeah, there's some fresher stuff over there. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's go have a look at the other side. Pretty dang cool. All right, we're still deciding where to set up camp. Yeah. 
All right, that is looking pretty awesome. So um, our little hot tent there, our insulated tent, uh, it's a fairly big footprint. So we might need just that little bit of mound there taken out and maybe smooth this guy out here. But all in all, that's a pretty, pretty awesome spot. They're just uh, trying to find where they want to set up the kitchen, probably right in that opening there. We'll set up the camp kitchen there. The only problem we're going to have is finding some rocks, probably. Well, we should be able to find some somewhere. Yeah. We can just go back down to the creek. Yeah, true. So, be the bathroom over here. It's just perfect. <laughs> Wait, Russell, mark a spot where Steve could barf later on. <laughs> The hot dog corner. <laughs> Swear to God, <laughs> eating his hot dogs. I think he was one biting them. They're coming up three inches long. <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah, <laughs> good times. Okay, so um, our hot tent comes with. Uh, we got an extra option, an insulated floor. So that goes down first underneath the tent. So we'll get this unfolded, and that'll tell us if we need to clear any more land or not. Last year, what did, what did it get down to overnight? I think we were almost in the double digits last yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, Ten or twelve, and uh, this tent was like it was it was really really nice to stay in with the little wood stove going. It was gorgeous. Man, I think we almost got it. Just a little bit more that way. Yeah, yeah. We'll be easier digging than that pile of crap. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we could come maybe a little tighter to this tree here. Okay, we're about half unloaded, so we're just gonna get our tent. Um, it was crazy when we packed up last year, it was it snowed the night before, so we're banging like four inches of snow off and it was pretty wet, but I hung it out to dry for like a good week in the shop there, so hopefully we, there's no uh, mildew or anything. Shouldn't be. It was nice and dry when we put it away, so, so we'll get this sucker uh, out of the case, spread out, and then we'll start standing it up. It's definitely got a bit of heft to it for sure. I'm not sure. This is the push up middle. Well, then we gotta go right this, right? Yeah. You want that in the middle? Yeah. Except for you want the. Oh, the, the opening down. should be down. Yep. Oh, yeah, I think Russell's right. You keep going, Stephen. Keep going, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting resistance here and I don't want to pull through. Oh, you're good. Standing. He was just standing on it. <laughs> So it's a very, very simple uh, erection, <laughs> how to set this up. It's like a, a large pop-up ice fishing shack. You get her kind of all set in place. You pop that center thing up. <laughs> oh yeah, we can turn it easy. There we go. Really, really easy, simple setup here. I'll back up a tiny bit here. Ready, boom. Like other oh, than wow. other than zipping in the floor, that is set up. <laughs> and this is only the second time we've done it. We did it once last year and this time. So we'll get that floor zipped in and we'll get her turned around so the door's over by the kitchen here. Okay, so now the floor just gets zipped in. So like I said before, um, the insulated floor goes down first. It's kind of like an insulated mat. And then the zip in floor goes this just helps uh, keep the cold from the ground from coming up. Although right now it's not mega important. I don't think we'll maybe get into the single digit minuses. I don't think we'll get as cold as last year. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. Sip that baby in and then uh, we got a tarp to set up out front here. Just uh, so a guy can leave his uh, boots and stuff outside, or at least leave some of the junk outside, maybe set up a tarp inside. Boots can stay inside in case it's raining. There is a porch here a guy can add on, but we didn't do it last year, so and we made out okay, so. All right, that's about, does it for that. So every uh, opening has got three, it's got a screen, it's got an inner and an outer cover, so it's three layers for everything. 
same with the door here you got this inner almost like insulation and then you got your screen and then you got your outer okay bro let's get the stove okay so one of the small issues we ran into last year is uh our little stove we got with the tent there was three different sizes and i chose the small one which was great except for overnight uh, when you wanted to stoke it to go to bed it only lasted about uh, two hours a little over two hours even uh, we tried a little uh, doing uh, say three or four uh, logs of dried pine and then a couple logs of of uh, birch and still didn't last too too long so Russell welded up a brand new stove um, it would probably be twice the size I would say yeah, it's 14 by 14. The other one was 7 by 8. Oh, yeah. So almost exactly twice the size. So we no. should uh, okay. go a lot longer between stokes this year. Even if we get four, four hours would be awesome. Well, Wake up once in the night. Okay. okay, guys, I put her in wide angle so you can see. This is my favorite part of camp, getting firewood. So this is our 60-volt uh, DeWalt little saw. It's a 16-inch bar. This thing is actually a freaking animal. So we're going to fall this dead baby hopefully it doesn't hang up in that tiny little branch there is kind of hung up a bit but we got the we got the curve going with us we want it to fall out there so let's see if I can film and do this at the same time I got my notch all oh, you guys cut a lot of wood hey cut your notch you want to start your back cut about two inches so you leave a bit of a hinge and the whole purpose of that hinge is as it's falling it, it can't fall that way or this way because the hinge right the hinge it can only fall towards your notch so it's important to have that good chunk of wood for your hinge so we'll see if i did it right here no it's falling back this way see if i can give her a little a little hefty hoe here She's a real bugger. Oh, most of you guys. Did you hear it? One more, one more. Oh, dirty bugger. I think our issue is she's hung up in that other, this tiny little skinny tree right there. That guy right there. <laughs> it's like they're holding hands up at the top there. Dang it. Maybe I get my brothers over here, give me a little extra heave hole. Okay, okay give her. <laughs> See? <laughs> Come back and then give her one more. Uh, go, go, go. Yeah, you got her. You got her. You got her. Look at it still. Oh, it finally let go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It was holding hands with that baby so hard. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you see how much the crack opened up there and it still wouldn't go no. just because it was holding hands? That was good with the wedge there. Then it couldn't come back so far. Good work. Good work. Yeah, that's probably enough firewood for we limbed one or two you. days. Yeah, <laughs> I picked one purposely with no limbs. There's a nice skinny one beside it too. Well, and then there's all this here too. This, this one holding hands with? Yeah. That'd be a nice size for throwing in a full log. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, let's watch this guy's technique. It's already a really long way, so you gotta yeah. Yeah. It's not going. <laughs> Russell, that's going back that way. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Just give it a good hinge up a tiny bit more. There you go. Good. And pinch saw. <laughs> and going the wrong way. Watch out. <laughs> Why, you hook on with the yeah, we could drag that out for that sure. We can leave the branches here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm good work. In a positive way. We'll just buck her up now. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Who's carrying that back? <laughs> <laughs> There's one big one on the bottom on this side, Russell. Big branch. No, on the tree that's th sitting there. Big one there.
Good work. All right, so we're just getting the the kitchen set up right now. Uh, Russell's just tying a, he likes to have a tarp uh, kind of up over top of everything. And that's a good place to store stuff that you don't want in the tent too. So in case it rains, nothing gets wet. So we're just digging our little burn pit here. We're gonna go on a mission and try to find four nice sized rocks for the grill to sit on. So you get a lot of air circulation so it burns good. Split up a bit of wood. So we need to do, I don't know, maybe double that. Put some in there for the stove tonight and then go get some rocks and we'll be we'll be sitting pretty getting firewood has never been easier all right so the first fire pit was dug there <laughs> But then we set up all the tarps and it just seemed like a better place to put it over here. That way the smoke can kind of go out that way. So we, uh, these guys spend a lot of time reinforcing the tarp, so everything's really good. Worst thing about trying to cook an open fire is trying to deal with wind and rain. So bring a few tarps and uh, hopefully take care of most of that. So we did all our cooking last year on the open fire. So. Steaks, potatoes, bacon, eggs, sausage, everything. Did macaroni and cheese oh yeah, that's right. Fire. Yeah, it was awesome. So we'll get that dug. It's about uh, almost four. So I think we're gonna go for a little cruise. Um, just to kinda, you know, uh, we kinda know the area cause this is kinda where we were last year. We didn't camp here, but we, we this is kinda on the way to where we camp. So we kinda know where we're going. So, but uh, we'll go out to get some cell service, maybe post a couple pictures for you guys. And then uh, come back and make a fire inside and out, cook some food, and relax. Have a good night. That was a good day. Good trip in. Pretty uneventful. It was fairly dry. Uh, a couple water holes, not too bad. The place where we got uh, not really stuck last year, but we got pretty wedged in, in that really soft stuff, um, we just drove right through there, no issue. So she's pretty dry this year. So, all right, we'll pick up in a little bit. Get too close. Might get smelly. He had his tail up. <laughs> Did you see his tail? <laughs> Moose, 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 moose. Let's go wide angle. Boom, look at this, gorgeous. Freaking beauty day. Hey, good evening, guys. So I just dropped off my two brothers. Um, they're just gonna um, go for a little walk. Actually, I dropped them off about 45 minutes ago. They're just gonna go for a last little walk, see if they can call anything in or see anything or whatever so I voted myself back stay back and get the fires going so I got the campfire going that's our gonna be our uh, cooking fire we used that uh, one grate there and we've last year we cooked every single meal on it this year is probably no different last last night we had burgers tonight we're having steaks and baked potatoes so everything else pretty uh, set up fairly decent sort of halfway's messy halfway's kind of um, put away and organized <laughs> So we got the inside fire rocking, so she's super warm. You can tell there is almost nothing for wind. The smoke is going straight up. So at least they'll be warm when they get back. So we made a little uh, SOS. Um, if they fire three shots with 10 second intervals, that means I'm supposed to come get them that they got a moose or something. I haven't heard anything yet. So I'll keep my ears open and if not, uh, we'll pick up and in a few minutes when they get back and we'll start cooking some steaks. You you know it's calm out when, how crazy is that? That is the smoke from our campfire. <laughs> crazy. 
crazy. Our camp is just right, right in there. It's just drifting out here slowly like a little cloud. That is too funny. Okay, I gotta go find my brothers. <laughs> okay, so here I think I'm being nice and just coming to get these guys. I missed the <laughs> SOS shots. He freaking shot a moose! Okay, tell me the story. I shot my little bull moose. I was uh, sitting on the edge of the little low spot, like kind of a little ravine. Kind of by the lake. Yeah. And I uh, heard a couple cracks, so I give out a couple grunts and no response. Next thing you know, I see this moose coming out. <laughs> and I was like, geez, is that a cow? Because it's in the, these tall trees, yep. like in the willows. Hard right? to see yet. And I watched him, it felt like an hour, and Stephen said it was probably about half an hour. And uh, he come out, he was about 10 yards from coming into the clearing. He turned around, he starts hiking back to the bush, so I figured it was time to start shooting. <laughs> so I give you my three warning shots, and that's what it took to drop him. I kept shooting for the hump to drop him, eh? Okay. <laughs> and uh, three shots, they were pretty close together, that's yeah. all. Oh. They were only about three, four <laughs> seconds apart. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for uh, the casings. To, oh, they're in this pocket. Oh, I did not hear that. All right, so we gotta go get a saw and. Yep. There's we got work to three do. Three shots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll go. We'll go we cruise back some, there. And... Uh, we did a, some pictures there before he left, but we okay. found this on the way out. Oh, funny. That's one of his sheds from last year. Why do you think it's his? Because he's still the same thing, oh. just a little bigger. <laughs> he's uh, one of those black moose. Like oh, yeah. A, not a Pretty big one. body. He's got a really big body. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So we're going to have some roast and sausage again this year, guys. All right. Steaks. Right on. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, let's briefly go over what's happening right now. <laughs> so we chose those two trees, um, that one and that one, uh, to put our cross beam so we can lift the moose up. We're just trying to clear out all this freaking deadfall so we can have a bit of room to work here. So... We got our cross post cut sitting here somewhere, a chunk of deadfall that still it was nice and white. So we're just gonna drag this big, big twisted bugger back and see what happens. Just we just needed about 12 feet this way to get out of our way. Okay, good. Watch yourself. Hey, uh, put this cable on the other side of this root here. You see, right there, just so it doesn't cut the, the winch cable. I might have to come forward a tiny bit. I don't know. Yeah, just up, up a tiny bit. Right. Yeah, right there. Okay, good. Sorry, guys. It's okay, if I break it, I know a guy who sells winch cable. Is that good or a bit more? Good? Okay. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna get the Sherp in there, in between there, hopefully, and we're gonna stand on top and try to tire our cross beam on. Okay, so uh, this is probably about five feet uh, above the Sherp, so we should be a good 15 feet in the air. Um, so we got a, an axle strap, which works really good. They're really strong, nylon sling, and a soft shackle to our little uh, recovery ring here, which is basically just a little, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, snatch block. So. Uh, that goes down, we'll hook it up. Russell brought his little moose hanger that holds the hind legs apart. That'll clip into a shackle down there and then we'll hook onto the other end. We'll park the Sherp over there and we'll just winch it up and winch the legs right up or winch the hanger right up. And then the legs will uh, be spread nice and spread apart here and allow it to cool tonight and then we can skin it. So now we're gonna get the moose operation, moose recovery. This is what success looks like. Boom. Oh. Okay, without getting too graphic, here's what we're doing. So we got our little uh, recovery ring up there, kind of like a snatch block, and then tied off to the Sherp. So we're just gonna winch in. We're gonna lift this guy up a little bit more so we can continue skinning him. How handy is a Sherp for a moose hunt? Pretty freaking handy. No, that is a sweet fire. So he tried chopping uh, smaller bits of wood so it will go to coals quicker because we got to cook steak and baked potato tonight. So we'll see if your theory pays off. Got to cook. <laughs> Bold strategy. Chef Russell's getting everything ready. Drunk too much today. I'm on water already. Hey? 
that I drank too much. I'm on water already. <laughs> so we got the fire going in here. Warm this baby up in here. Looks weird with the LED light on. And those little DeWalt uh, area lights. Holy cow, do they. That's on dim. <laughs> they work really good. We got two of them. Steven brought his. I brought mine. On that 12 amp hour battery, it'd probably last about 17 days. At least 12 days. Yeah. All right. We'll get uh, this down to coals and we'll get that grate on and then we'll pick back up when we're putting the stakes on. Okay. So finally, after what seems like eternity to cook those potatoes, we got the coals. We threw on these little, what do you call them? Hot spots. Little hot spots. If the coals start to get a little too cool, we just throw one of those on and they just spark up the flame just perfect to finish off the steak. And then I'm cooking some popcorn too. <laughs> yes. Oh, my friends. Ooh, it's gonna be good. This is why food always tastes so good. Cook like this, because it takes so dang long. <laughs> You're so, yeah, so friggin' hungry. But no, it tastes like fan, fantastic. Last year was like, holy, I think one of the best steaks of the year I had cooked on a fire like this. So, all right, we'll pick back up when we're done. Okay, we're ready. It's perfect. A little blurry. Sorry, boys. There we go. Except for a fire almost went out. Stoked her up. Yummy! <laughs> That's good stuff. It is the evening of day three. Um, we decided to split up. So each of us took a kind of a, you know, an area to kind of see. I chose here because you can see a long ways. So we got about a hour, hour 15 of light left. So they've been really hanging up until, you know, close to legal shooting time before they come out to feed. So it's been really warm weather, which doesn't help. So definitely not pushing the rut so they're not moving during the day at all so the only uh activity we've seen is in the evening that's when russell shot that one yesterday evening he was feeding so we're just hoping uh something comes out here in the next like i say about the next hour so we'll keep you posted but this is the area we're dealing with really nice like that's probably a good uh, four or five hundred yards to there maybe even further, maybe six or 700 yards. So we got a really good area here to keep our eyes and ears open. So we'll pick back up if we hear anything besides woodpeckers and ravens. So just in the last about two minutes, I've heard two shots really long ways away. But uh, so that's proving someone is seeing something. Look at the sunset, you guys. So anyways, we haven't really heard, heard or seen anything, so like I said, we got maybe 10 minutes left. So we got uh, one full day and a part day left, so that'll probably be it for today, so wish us luck tomorrow. It's so awesome being out here, it's so quiet and peaceful. super rad. Hunting is uh, very therapeutic. A lot of, uh, you know, time alone with your thoughts and nice de-stress time for sure. 
Okay guys, we'll pick up again tomorrow unless something crazy happens. <laughs> Oh boy, that's steep. And he did her. Wow. No problem that time. Yeah. For I don't know how many years. Yeah. My uh, my good friends, like one of the guys was used to be a contractor. Yeah. And I knew the dad really good. Him and I were really good friends. Oh we yeah. In the bush together some. Yeah. And then we hear that well the boys don't come up anymore. Yeah. Those four boys. Yeah. So here this fall, and I've been pestering and pestering them this fall. <laughs> Well, last January, I think it was. December, January, I, when I first started begging him. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Your dad and I are really good friends. Let me yeah. get a chance out. Well, give me your phone number and I'll think of one. <laughs> so I thought it was in the week you phoned me back. Oh, right on. If you want it, you can have it. Oh, that's awesome. So the boys took her up right now. Eh? Awesome. So if you guys remember last year we came in here and uh, this was the little cabin we're in where the where those awesome chainsaw calendars were and remember it was all just ripped to crap from freaking raccoons and squirrels and stuff and here these guys came in. Wow. Wow, spray foam too. Wow. It sure looks different but oh. <laughs> oh exactly, eh? <laughs> Oh, that was freaking awesome. The wives aren't happy that we've got PlayStation. Oh, well, they're not here, so. <laughs> well, Frick, you guys did an awesome work. It's a work in progress. Wow. Sure. Man, what did you think when you first got here? It was uh... a... <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> hey? It was ripped up good. And this wall was right full of ants. Oh, wow. So then the bears decided they thought they should get in. Oh, here. claw in there and, oh, jeez. The so they didn't that, get in. So well, they didn't get in, thankfully, okay. but they didn't. We just didn't. seen the hole in the floor for, yeah. like, the raccoons. Yeah. My, bro my brother's yeah. definitely scared of mice. Oh, yeah. So the floor has tin all underneath. Oh, yeah, so they can't floor. chew and in. We tinned all the corners so that... Oh, yeah, wow. Hopefully mice don't come and visit well, us. Well, awesome work, you guys. That is freaking oh, cool. Yeah, really good. Yeah. It's through your video, you have to do the comparison. Of oh, totally. Yeah, I'll put a little bit of last year, like you guys did so much work. Well, that is awesome. I'm glad we came down. We're like, ah, oh, we'll go check out last year's hunting spot. Yeah. Well, we'll go check out that little cabin again. So we come down the lake and then we see some, oh, right on or something there. When we first come in here, oh my God. Oh, it was so. Oh, well. That is freaking awesome. Super cool. This is the only logical spot. Well, that is freaking cool. Man, I'm so glad we came down here. That's freaking awesome. So cool that, you know, something that was basically, you know, another few years and it would have been <laughs> probably not even salvageable. salvageable. So super awesome that they came and, and uh, basically uh, 
inherited it or or bought it and uh, got her all revamped and got lots of bunk beds in there and the spray foam is gonna be good and warm that is cool the only thing is they're just riding the wrong brand of quads is getting <laughs> all right so this is where we camped last year you guys right in this uh area right here is where we had the tent and stuff is a really great area it was just a a bit more of a struggle to get in back here so we we camped a few clicks that way this year so this is the hill that we went down into the lake and then to go over to see that cabin i'm so glad we came back to check out our thing and we gotta clean up our garbage from last year probably from us red solo cup there no leave no trace behind but yeah super freaking cool i was cool running into those guys they're not even really hunters they just love sledding and quadding and stuff and they got that cabin now so that's cool so maybe we'll hook up with them and go for a sled trip this year up here this whole valley goes on and on and on forever when that fills with snow hole oh, it would be like heaven all right okay so this yahoo leaves camp about half hour ago me and russell are going to our spots he's going to his spot I'm driving in the Sherp. I drop Russell off on the main trail. He starts walking south. I start heading north in the Sherp. I don't hear nothing. Russell hears shot, Ooh, crack, whomp. Ooh, that sounded like hit. Then two more, crack, crack. So I'm going up this way. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna sit there tonight. I'm gonna sit back here. So I start coming back down the trail and Russell's got this concerned look on his face as I'm pulling up. What the heck? I heard shots, he hit something, blah, blah, blah. So we're like, oh crap, now we gotta find him because I don't know exactly sure. He just started hiking into the trees. I marked, I marked the trail with a ribbon where I went in. Oh yeah, I seen that. So That's I parked I there, in. yeah. So anyways, I'm trying to whistle to get someone's attention. So then they whistle, but I thought it was over there. So I start driving while here, they're over here. So now you shot some big bugger and he's in the middle of the freaking tree. So now we gotta try to get this guy out. We're then we gotta cut him up. Oh my God, what did you do? <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Two freaking moose. Wow. I'm excited to see him. I never thought I'd, I never thought I'd be able to shoot a moose wow. in a bush like that. No kidding. So what, did you just walk up on him or? I walked up and, and seen him running away from me wow. and there was a whole bunch of trees down. Yeah. So I thought a fairly wide open shot. Yeah. And I don't know if I hit him the first shot or not, but he went a little ways crunching, and then he stopped. So I started walking towards him thinking, well, what, I, I don't have a choice. I have to walk towards yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe blood, maybe not. Can't tell, right? Yeah. And then I seen his ass, and I'm like, oh, good. He didn't go too far. But I couldn't see the front of him or, or his boiler room. Yeah. So a couple more steps, and then he's gone. And it's like, well, where'd he go now? Yeah. So a couple more steps around to the side, and I see him standing there, and he's side... Uh, side to me yeah yeah and so squeeze off one he didn't flinch and i'm like well okay squeeze off another one that was it boom boom oh, awesome yeah. Yeah. right on so you're not sure if you hit him first time or not i'm not well i don't know i looked when the no i definitely hit him the first time oh, because there was a okay. blood trail coming there. Oh, okay yeah yeah so and it was leaking out of him pretty good where he stopped oh, okay and he went about 10 more feet and i shot twice where he was standing oh yeah and that's where he dropped. oh so you probably would have been down anyways yeah. Well, that's awesome. He's he's down down for good now. So now we just gotta try to get to him and get this guy out. <laughs> okay, that's gonna make some funny videos. Oh god, well, let's go back to camp and, and uh, grab some, some knives, and some poly. Okay. He's got In case his we got a quarter of Okay. Okay. We can skin him right there. Yep. And yep. Him off if, we, if we need to. Yeah, we let's can. Let's bring that. Let's bring that four shackle. Yeah. So we can yeah. Him up if we can. Yeah. If we have to. Yeah. If I can't get in there with the shirt. Yeah. Okay. Moose down. Now we gotta rescue it. Well, we got the right machine. Talk about having the right tools for the job. Holy frickin' frack. Well, let's see where he's gonna go from here. And my moose is right at those trees right there. Dave's driving right to him. It's like he knows where he is. Oh man, super pumped. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you drove right to him. It's like he knew where you were going. Well, boys, a little bit of bush crunching, and we are freaking here. I didn't know where he was, and I just drove and drove, and then, boom, I seen a boost. Ouch. So, yeah, not too bad. You just got to avoid the big stuff. A little bit of work ahead of us, but... 
Actually, not too, too bad. You're right, there's a lot of down stuff, but really. I can't believe the willows came as far as they did. Yeah, thank God. Way, right? Yeah. Yeah, like if we had to try to pick our way through there, no chance, right? You're not going to be pushing over. There's only so much deadfall a guy can cut. But it was pure willows all the way to there, so this last little part here was just enough for the shirt to fit. Oh man, I can't believe we got two moose. He looks freaking awesome too. Oh, yeah. Wow. That is freaking awesome. Wow. Look at that big guy. He's huge. As I'm tripping. Wow. When it comes to uh, game recovery, there's uh, yeah, you, there's no not too many limits. The little guy is doing okay back there. Got a couple little logs, and then a bit more willows, and then we're out. Well, boys, that's a wrap for the night. We got her all skinned and hung. Man, the shirt makes things easy, not only for getting stuck ATVs out, but for getting big bull moose out of the bush too. The lighting, just the the overall capability of it, oh, it makes things so much freaking easier, thank God. So I'm just gonna go uh, get service and uh, I'll post a pic for you guys. Oh, good morning guys. So <clears throat> it is pack up camp day. So we're just getting all our tarps down, getting all cleaned up. We'll get the um, stove dumped out and cooled off. <laughs> We'll get the tent. We'll get the tent taken down and packed up. Um, we're gonna have trouble because those are all moose meat there, and we have another at least that much, or maybe a tiny bit more, because that's a larger moose. So we're gonna have to really, really be smart on how we pack stuff <laughs> to make sure we fit everything in the shirt for the ride out. So, so we'll pick back up when we got camp mostly cleaned up. What's the word of the day? Moose. Consolidation. <laughs> so yes, we're putting chainsaw bar oil with our food and air compressor and tire plugs. Consolidation. <laughs> <laughs>we got that entire moose <laughs> we got that entire freaking moose boned out so that is all moose the top one's not but that one the one under it that one that one's all freaking moose hundreds and hundreds of pounds of moose meat so we're just trying to get everything in so that they still have a because we need a one seat there <laughs> so it'd be like me and then steven and russell or whichever one draws short straw <laughs> gets to sit back here so this all fits in really nice. Um, we do one tote straight, one tote turned, and then they all stack nice on each other, and then the generator, and then this is the wood stove. So we just gotta get that, 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 and that in there. <laughs> one of the features of this tent is the zip out floor. So it's kinda hard to tell because we got the insulated floor underneath. But basically, where we had our fire you know you have all sorts of bark and junk so you just zip out the entire floor fold it out take it outside boom get rid of all the junk and then fold up the tent fold up the insulated floor and that is it uh, we'll close up these little holes for man as hot as that burns it's crazy obviously this is fire proof material but man it does such a good job awesome okay we are getting dang close we got quite a bit of junk left to go in the shirt but we're getting close okay when i said we had to pack her we packed her <laughs> right down to there you guys holy but everything fit so we're just gonna lock this back sorry we're just gonna lock that just so if anything falls it doesn't open up that door because we got some hills and stuff and we got camp pretty much all tidied up my widow stick, that's my oh. shooting sticks. Oh, yeah. Walking cane. <laughs> hey. That's a pretty sweet cane. We'll leave, it, we'll leave it in the tree for next year. That was a pretty comfy uh, tent spot. Yeah. Nice hopefully, soft. hopefully it grows some moss for next year. Put her in wide angle here. 
Oh yeah, just mint. So yeah, important thing is just to take all your garbage, everything you bring with you. Actually, we had only one bag of garbage. So packed all that up, put that in the Sherp. And just, you know, leave leave it as close to, other than flattened where we, <laughs> where we stop and a tiny bit of eggshells in the fire pit. We are good to go. Last little walk through and start this baby up. And we're just gonna make our way slowly because we got, I don't know, three or four or 500 pounds of moose meat. So look at those tires. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's uh, 20 after 11, like we did really good. Yeah. Good job, guys. Packed up cam, boned out a moose, and we are headed out. All right. Frickin' success! Oh, yes. Let's go! Except for when I climbed in and forgot to lock the rear door, and then I had to climb out and go lock the rear door. <laughs> but lots of room. Oh, for your big couple, bowl on the way out. <laughs> we got a couple of moose hordes in here. Holy cow! Okay. We gotta frickin', we gotta get going. It's almost as sad to leave. It's such a gorgeous day. Yeah. All right, let's get cruising. Boys, look at this effing trail. Holy. So it's a pretty dry year, so usually this is pretty soft and, and marshy, but it is like driving on a on a paved highway, and it's almost as wide as about a four-lane highway. Crazy, these trails up here, some of them. Some of them get pretty tight, but these ones here, holy cow, they're big. They're easy to see from Google Maps and satellite. Just because they're so wide and so straight, that's yeah, a little, little soft in some spots, but all in all, pretty easy going. We should be at the trucks in about another half hour, 40 minutes. All right, guys, that is freaking it. We are loaded up and we are headed for home. We got 150, so three PSI, like max PSI, and there's still a little wrinkle because there's so much freaking weight in there. But we've got our strap down good. Man, the old Sherp, uh, like, you, you're not gonna drive around and get a moose in the Sherp, but what you can do is you can haul a lot of stuff in and you can get to a lot of cool places and park it and then walk and have a really, really great hunt. So that's the be best advantage of the Sherp. So we got some cool video for you guys. Hopefully it makes a great video. Um, as always, I wanna thank all you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one.